Welcome to the Texas Council of Teachers of Mathematics video series designed to support the transition to online testing. The Texas Education Agency has excellent resources about the STAR redesign on their website that is linked in the description below. To review other TCTM videos, please visit the link in the description or subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is the first in our Fall 2022 series of videos about the new item types in which we'll explore equation editor items. Although TEA has stated that equation editor items may be scored as one or two points, depending upon the question, all the sampler items TEA provided prior to standalone field testing for equation editor items are scored as one point items. TEA has met with some groups and that decision may change, so if it does, this video will be updated to reflect that later in the month. This video will show elementary grades three through five examples of equation editor items. I will log into the Cambium platform from the Texas Assessment website by clicking on the Students and Families menu and scrolling down until I can click on the Practice Test Login tile. Once here, I will navigate my way to third grade new item type practice, click on the tile, and then scroll down until I see 2021 practice for math item. In third grade math, there are two example items, and we'll only look at one of them to see how these items work. Notice for item number two, we have whole number side lengths of a hexagon. We can calculate the whole number perimeter and enter our whole number solution into the box above the allowable keys. This box looks a little like a calculator, but isn't. Notice that in third grade, students might be asked to use a fraction key to enter their answer, if it is a fraction. These keys are the only keyboard inputs that equation editor items will accept for this problem. If the key appears on screen and on the student's keyboard, the student can either press it on the keyboard, on the screen, or on the keyboard on their machine to enter their answer. The buttons at the top of the box allow students to go back and put in something they forgot, undo or redo an action, or delete part of an answer that they entered. Now I'll jump to the fourth grade test by logging out of the system and back into it via the Texas Assessment website. In fourth grade math, there are four example items of equation editor problems, and we're going to look at all of them, numbers one through four. Item one provides an example of how whole numbers might be utilized to enter fractional values. So we have a fraction model and students are asked to enter an expression that represents that model with eight boxes for entry. Notice there are eight separate boxes to enter answers into, and this item is listed as a one-point item. I did ask for clarification from TEA about this, and the answer I received is that any one of those boxes being incorrect would not represent a correct model of Y. Therefore, it would be counted as incorrect in its entirety. Item two shows a different way that fractional values may be entered by using the fraction key and typing the numerator and then clicking into the space for the denominator and typing the denominator. So in this case, we have one box. We would click the fraction key. Notice the cursor is at our numerator. And then we would have to click or scroll down to the denominator. We could enter 12, we could click the one and the two button to enter our answers. Item three is like the item we saw in third grade in that a whole number answer is expected, but the problem to get there is a multi-step problem to determine the remainder. Finally, item four in grade four highlights the additional allowable key in this grade level, the decimal point that must be used to enter decimal answers. Now I'll jump to the fifth grade test by logging out of the system and back into it by the Texas Assessment website. 
In fifth grade math, there are two example items, and we're going to look at both of them, numbers one and two. For item one, notice the answer requires us to use a symbol and not just numbers. As we scroll down to see the allowable keys, there are many more for this fifth grade item than there were for any of the third or fourth grade items, including the four operations, comparison symbols, and parentheses. This item also highlights that there could be different correct answers for a single question in the star redesign. Any of the six different correct comparisons would be counted correct for this one point item. Again, students can use the allowable keys on their device keyboards, or they can click the allowable keys online to enter their answers. The last item we'll examine in this video is item 2 in grade 5. Here we have an item with several answer boxes to fill in, like we saw in the fourth grade fraction example. But this time students must enter the expanded notation for a decimal number correctly. Six boxes and only one point for the scoring of the item. Um, I did ask TEA for clarification as the tenths place lists tenths as a decimal the 0 0.1 or one that decimal representation of one tenth and they did clarify that if a student were to enter the fractional answer of one tenth here it would be counted correct that any equivalent response would be counted correct uh, for this item as you can see equation editor items in elementary are somewhat similar to the numerical response items that were placed gridables in the online testing environments but equation editor items differ in that more number type responses are possible, including fractions, that symbols can be used in answers like the greater than sign, and the items restrict which keys can be used to produce those answers. The space key is always disabled for equation editor items. To equip your students for success with this item type, familiarize them with the online examples provided in Cambium by TEA and utilize equation editor typing tools as frequently as needed so that students really understand how they work. Thanks for watching.